and a very warm welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have your company with me on the show this evening, especially as we are joined by Marcus Fear from Living in the Box. And we'll be catching up with him after this. Marcus, it's great to have you on the show. Oh, Marcus, are you there? I am. Is that you? Living in a box. How else Yay! would I? How else would I appear? You know, come on, it's lockdown city at the moment, and everybody's living in a box. So you know, this is it. That's got to be the best entrance to the show I think I've ever seen great on the Memory Lane eighties. Thank you for that, Marcus. You're welcome. You're welcome. And how has life been for you? Obviously, we are in lockdown. Well, uh, but, what's been happening for you, your end? Uh, you know, what's everybody up to? I mean, trying to get fitter, I suppose. You know, get get out and about yeah. and. Uh, Taking the opportunity to shed a bit of timber, um, get fit for hopefully when shows open up again in the not too distant future. You know, we're all hoping that the yeah. live music scene comes back to what it was before. Who knows? Oh, yeah. um, but I've been working on my um, Kids Trucks TV channel, which is a YouTube channel for young children. And I've been writing really a lot of stuff for that because kids are at home with not a lot to do. And it's got a nice educational vibe to it. So uh, I've been busy with that. And, um, yes. you know, we've got a few kids at home that we probably wouldn't normally have had. Um, but everybody's got on. There's no rows. But we've got very good at uh, Trivial Pursuit, you know. What can you say? Oh, I love that. It's a good game. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a game of that. And uh, I'm very good at Connect Four. No one's ever actually beaten me. Do you know, I've never Always played a winner at that. I've never played game. it. Never played it. So, no? You're, no, I'm always up You're for learning out. that. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about uh, living in the box. Uh, is it right that one of your band members was living in a flat in Sheffield and it felt like living in the box and that is where the name came from? That is true, yeah. A friend of ours lived in Hyde Park Flats, which is a, a, a big sort of uh, block in, in Sheffield, and just said to me one day, he said, I feel like I'm living in a box. Oh. And I didn't think anything more of it, really, until I was putting the backing track together for, for what became living in a box. And it just sort of fit really well. I just started singing over the top. And then I'm a living in a box, so just sort of was, was worked perfectly. Um, and so the song is really not just about him and his experience, but it was about the idea of um, feeling constrained and wanting to go beyond your boundaries. And, you know, that, that echoes still, you know, to this day. Yeah, it really does, especially in lockdown. I think we've all felt like we're living in a box and you yeah. know, we want to get out and get back going again. <laughs> so out. very relatable at the moment. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, this hit number five in 1987. It also uh, went to the charts in the US, didn't it? It did. It did. Um, our record company were not at their best in in, uh, in, in performing in the States at the time, um, but they did manage to get it, I think, top 20 or pretty close to it. Um, but, yeah. you know, the song became every other country of the world. It became a top five record and has since gone wow. on to be used in, in, in movies and it was recently used yeah. in uh, Black Mirrors. It was recently used in Grand Theft Auto, which is obviously one of the biggest all-time games. Uh, so young kids are, are getting turned on to living in a box through that, which is brilliant to be getting a new audience. So they was around destroying the world in their cars and they're on the radio, they put living in a box. And it's, uh, it's been great. Even my son has gone, Crikey, I can't believe you're on this you're on this game. So, uh, and then, then the, German football, the German football team used it for an advert for, for something. I can't remember what. So Fantastic. it's become it's become almost the phrase living in a box has become, you know, you see it in magazines. You see it used a lot uh, in popular culture. So it's become quite a record. You know, it really has. Yeah, it really has. It's brilliant. It's uh, so catchy. I know I'm going to be singing it for the rest of the evening. Uh, check out the video and we'll see you in just a couple of minutes time. Marcus, let's talk life before living in a box, because am I right in saying you were a promoter for the Limit Club and the Lyceum Theatre? I have done my research here. You have actually done your research. Really good. Yeah, I was. Um, well, I worked for the for the Limit Club for a while, handing out flyers and posters. I mean, you know, as much as that is learning about promoting, actually, it is quite important. I mean, I really enjoyed it. And there was the, you know, the, the fun of dodging the police as you were putting up our, our fly posters up on the wall illegally and all this kind of stuff, handing out flyers. Um, but also, you know, there was a there was a, a really great throughput of amazing talent that went through the Limit Club in, in, in the eight, early 80s. So, you know, The Clash, The Police, um, you know, it was just phenomenal. The artists I got to see in a club, probably when they were going out for the very first time. And I think it was a 350 capacity gig, so it was tiny, you know, and God. sticky carpets and sweat on the ceiling. It was a brilliant <laughs> club. It really was. And then the, the owners of the Limit Club uh, bought the Lyceum Theatre, so I went to work with them there. And then they put me more in a position oh. of, of booking the acts. So we had right. like U2 and we had Kid Creole and the Coconuts and all these amazing oh, wow. acts. And I got to get a relationship going with the agents in London. 
which, you know, later on, as, you know, Once Living in a Box was born, said, put me in good stead in terms of the business side of dealing yeah. with the music industry. And it came became really handy. Brilliant times. Yeah, Great I times. Bet. Yeah, good times when you look back. And how did it come together, you know, the whole Living in the Box thing? Because is it right that uh, Titch... Uh, played you a demo from his current band. He did, he did. And I was working at the Lyceum Theatre at the time, but that, that company I worked for also promoted concerts all over the north of England. And they were, uh, I think they were promoting The Clash at Leeds Queen's Hall at the time. And they were looking, The Clash were insistent that they had a local band, which is quite nice. Um, so my job mm. really was, at uh, that time, was trying to listen to all the local bands, go out to the pubs and clubs and see what was going on and, and, and get tapes from people and demos. Titch came in to the office one day with his uh, cassette, um, <laughs> the, 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 the songs and the band weren't very good, but the drummer was amazing. So uh, <laughs> right. he didn't get the gig, but we just hit it off as mates. Um, yeah. And I was working on something in the background at the time. You know, I was seeing all these bands come through these uh, these venues. I thought, you know, I can do that. I can do that. I mean, you know, yeah. you're thinking you can do it, whether you can are, are two different things. But I've got a musical background. I always played keyboards at school and stuff. So. Um, so we just started rehearsing together, you know, as much as rehearsing uh, covers or write, starting to write music and starting to do our own stuff in my dad's warehouse, um, where in the oh. day they were stuffing, um, you know, fishing rods into, into tubes and sending them off to mail order catalogues. Um, in the <laughs> evening, I'd, I'd have Titch, me and, and, uh, and a mate on a, on a guitar or something, and we'd start a little band going. And like everybody else, you start rehearsing, you get a bit more into it. Um, and then we got into a studio and started. I started re writing the backing track for what became Living in a Box, and we didn't have a singer. Bit of a problem. Um, but Richard was very well known on the local scene, and he actually used the same demo studio. By pure chance, we were re recording, uh, ending, ending our session, just having finished the backing track, and I put a guide vocal of Living in a Box over the top. And the next session was Richard who came in with his uh, demos, and he was a solo artist at the time looking for a deal. And he said, what's that song? How's it going? This sounds amazing. And I said, yeah, we're looking for a singer. Would you put a vocal on it? And he did. Wow, it was meant to be. It just all came together. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to go uh, in with the next song, Scales of Justice. I love this song. Now, this was the follow-up single to Living in the Box, wasn't it? Was, it was, yeah. Yeah, the follow-up single, similar sound, so one of those really funky Level 42 style yeah. bass lines, you know, a bit like Hot Water. Um, but, you know, it had all the power and the energy, and obviously the record company picked it because yeah. it, it was obviously a follow-on. Um, but, yeah, great fun. Again, superb fun making the video too. Really good. Yeah, it looks it. I love this oh, video. Yeah. Check this out. We'll see you in a minute. Talk about your YouTube channel that you set up called right. Kids Truck TV. Yeah. I did have a little sneak peek on YouTube. I was having a great time watching this. Absolutely brilliant. How did this all come about? Um, came about, so during the lull of sort of living in a box careers, um, I right. say that as there almost seemed like they're two. There's sort of the, uh, the 80s and the now. Um, my son, like all toddlers, it must have been around three years old, was just transfixed <laughs> if there was ever a fire engine or a tractor or a digger yeah. um, that came by. It was literally, he was rooted to the spot, jaw dropped. Uh, and for some <laughs> reason, just looking for something to, to get involved with that was a bit fresh. I was surrounded by young kids at the time. I had three, three under five at one point. Um, and uh, it was it's really a, an idea that my wife helped uh, put in my head because she'd just been in the States. She's from Boston. And, and one of the biggest videos, uh, independent videos at the time, was literally a camera locked off in a building site showing pictures of diggers going up and down. But it wasn't very good, but it was very successful. And so we thought, well, if we can put some music to it and put in a little bit more effort in explaining what's going on, then we might have something. So we, we started uh, basically a little mom and pop business in the kitchen. Uh, got a company to make up some DVDs, went out with some friends to film, some tractors going up and down in a field, wrote some songs, put them all together and got into some uh, mail order catalogues at the time. We ended up winning awards and, and, and selling a lot of DVDs. Now, by Yeah, it's done so well. Later, later on, it became that DVDs, of course, were on their way out. And nobody watched DVDs anymore. So we thought, well, let's just put them up on YouTube and see how it goes. I didn't think anything of it. And, you know, we put it up and I think, 20 people saw it, 200 people saw it, 2,000 people saw it. Six months later, 300,000 people had seen it and wow. it just absolutely That's took brilliant. off. And, and yeah. now there are 10, 11, 12 million views, you know, for, for those shows called the Here Comes a Show, so it's Here Comes a Tractor, etc. Yeah. 
And then it really became, we want to do something with some characters. And so we set up a show called Cody in the Cloud last year. Uh, and that is really, really sweet. And um, I write all the music uh-huh. for it and we film live action. It's educational and a bit of a, a nice right re- relief to some of the brain mushing stuff that's put on YouTube for kids. Um, and uh, we yeah. love doing it. It's great fun. In fact, that's what I'm doing oh. now. I'm writing, writing for that. Oh, now. Well, we're all going to take a little look, uh, a little clip uh, from Cozy and the Cloud. Have a little look at this. Hi, I'm Cody the Tablet, and this is my friend Cloud. Now, we've got a question from one of our viewers, Amanda. She would like to know, are you surprised where some of your songs have been used? I know we talked about this earlier. Um, I saw people on Twitter saying it was used in an 80s film. And also, I think I've heard Living in the Box on Homes Under the Hammer, one of my favourite shows. Am I right? Yes. For some reason, we've got a Living in a Box fan at Homes on the, Under the Hammer. Um, hey. they, they, they do play it a lot, but obviously it works they for them do. too. I mean, it works for all sorts of things. If you think about it, technology, we've done yeah. a lot of advertising with, with TVs and in Japan and so on and so forth. The song, you know, it's very sort of graphic in terms of the, the, the idea of a box. Um, and yeah, it's, it was used in um, Can't Buy Me Love. And it was also in the background in uh, Masters of the Universe in the 80s. Um, yes, two big yeah. 80s. One, one was a rom-com, one was a sort of more sort of, uh, you know, adventure movie. And more recently, as we said earlier, that it was, it was used in uh, a, an episode called San Junipero, which was in Black Mirror, which is fantastic. And they walk into a club and the song's playing and this guy thinks it's completely weird. What are these cats doing <laughs> living in a box? You know, which is very un-American. You just don't get those kind of songs. <laughs> Having said no. that, I'll tell you an interesting snippet about living in a box, because when it first got played... Um, and uh, it, it was uh, played at, at uh, Tony Blackburn played it on his show on Radio London. Oh yes, the he's first a fan, time, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's a big fan, and he was the first uh, person to ever play a record three times in a row. Um, oh wow! And he'd got Bobby Womack in the studio at the time, and um, we were big fans of of Bobby's from many from going back. Um, but uh, Bobby decided that he was going to put the record out before us. <laughs> and took the song to MCA in the States, recorded it and tried to put it out. And Chrysalis ended up having to injunct them to stop them doing it. It was quite an interesting story. We were mates wow. afterwards. It was, you know, yeah. it's just how things are. Um, but wow. uh, yeah, it was really nice of him to cover that song, you know, as well, you know. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to go into the next song, uh, Room in Your Heart. I've been listening to this today and it is one of the most beautiful songs. I am a sucker for a ballad, uh, but I had to download this on iTunes. It really is like very romantic, isn't it? It is. It's a rom- romantic song. And, you know, when we're working with Kenny, as he's always said, it's a singer's song. He loves, loves singing that song. And um, oh. we're very proud of it. Yeah. Well, it's still very popular today, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It gets a lot more airplay. And, you know, through the whole experience of being called Living in a Box, uh, and we had a song called Living in a Box, which confused the heck out of people. We actually kind of wish in retrospect <laughs> that we'd never done that. Um, when you go Living in a Box, Room in Your Heart, it's a bit like, oh, God, he did that song. You know, I mean, people who know the band know we did it. But there's a lot of people who don't. And, they, and it's one of those that sort of went a bit under the radar. It was a big hit record at the time. It was top five again here. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, it did very well all over the world. Um, and again, with the video, we filmed it in Siena in Italy. What a beautiful place. Oh, wow. Just beautiful. Well, uh, here it is from 1989. It's one of my favourite songs. Absolutely beautiful. Check this out. Now, I want to talk Living in the Box with Kenny Thomas. Just incredible. I love this combination. How did this happen? That's what we all want to know. Um... Well, from good old Google. I mean, once Richard has decided he didn't want to do it anymore, which is fair enough. He was always actually one yeah. of the most uh, reluctant pop stars that I've ever known. What a voice. I mean, very difficult to oh, sort of yeah. follow up on. Um, but we yeah. were looking, uh, we just hit, hit Google and, and uh, decided that we wanted to do something. We kept getting all these offers to go and do festivals again. And Titch and I had decided that we wanted to do something. It wasn't, you know, we didn't need to park the bus there and leave it, you know. So the idea of going out live, finding someone who could sing the songs and bring something else to the party, you know, they're not, they're not exactly uh, all over the place. They're very thin and, and, and on the ground. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Kenny, Kenny came up and, and, of course, Kenny and I were, were stable mates. We were both signed to Christmas Records back in the day. So we would bump into, right. into each other, even though our careers were slightly, you know, three or four years yeah. apart. We, were, we would see each other on, on the promos and so on and so forth. And I, I'd always got on with such a lovely guy, great reputation in the, in the industry. 
And I asked yeah. him, I phoned him up and said, do you want to play with Living in a Box? Because we've got some shows and we ain't got a singer. And he said, well, yeah, absolutely. Give me, give me a day to think about it. And he came back. I don't think it was even a day. I think it was that evening. and said, you know, I've thought about it. Let's do it and see how it works. Yeah. And of course, you don't know how it's going to work. Until well, you get you in a, it is a risk. It isn't is a it? risk. But it, it just it does work with you guys. It does work, and you know the good thing about it is that we get to play some Kenny songs as well as Living in a Box songs, and I think we totted up maybe six top five records and two top ten records in our set. You know there aren't many bands who can do that, um, and it was it was it's it's a really good set. Works really really well. He's a lovely guy, and uh, yeah, we're having lots of fun. Yeah, we can't wait to come to a festival. I'm so excited. Can't wait to be to at a festival. Just good sing heavens. my heart out. I know. I know. <laughs> Well, you know, we sing our hearts out as well. You can't hear. Well, you can hear us, but it, not not in the same way, probably. Yeah, probably best you don't hear my voice. But anyway, uh, we're going to play out uh, a clip uh, we've got here uh, from Living uh, Festival uh, with Kenny Thomas. Um, it's thinking about your love. Just such a tune. Such I will a tune. Be actually, singing this full blast right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out the video. See you in just a couple of minutes. We're going to do one of mine. Trust in me, baby, don't you worry. And it won't be long now, so we must be strong. There were times I know I let you down so badly. I never knew then what losing your love would mean to me. Ask for anything, I give it to you gladly. Because you're part of me now, and you must believe that. Beside you till I hold you in my arms again. I find it hard to smile, so I'm asking you be faithful to me, baby. Because I'm coming through, and I'll always love you. If you're hurt, I'm hurting too. And thinking about your love, you need someone to care. the end of the show but i am excited because we're going to play out blow the house down right. absolute tune uh tune. brian may is on the guitar on this one isn't he he is he is in fact somebody uh, on social came to, uh, on on our channel the other day and said oh blow the house down such a great song such a great great guitar solo um and i go yeah i bet that you bet you know because i still do air guitar around the living room when that comes on <laughs> 
And uh, and he didn't realise it was Brian May. And it's like, how can that not be Brian May? Who else could it be? <laughs> yeah? And he was um, and he was in the Olympic Studios in Barnes, um, which is now cinema, sadly, but was a great studio. And uh, they were recording uh, an album there. And um, we basically knocked on the door and said, would you come and consider playing guitar on this this track? And he he's such a lovely guy. He came in and said, absolutely. Oh, I didn't think people were making records like this anymore. Brought in that oh, guitar, yeah. you know, and, and plugged in and instantly. Oh, wow. It was like spine tingling. And he's such yeah. a lovely guy. And, you know, a couple of mistakes. Oh, oh guys, sorry. I'm still so embarrassing. I mean, this is coming from Brian May. And he is so, so like that. And he just basically had half an hour with us and put that massive lick down on the on the on the record and phew, what a solo. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, what a solo. Well we want everyone to turn it up loud right now. It's a way to go uh, out. We have come to the end of the show, but it's been so lovely to chat to you and really take a trip down memory lane, especially in these times. Uh, no. Thank you so much. Bring on the festivals. We will keep everyone at home posted. Uh, fingers crossed for Let's Rock yep. uh, in Essex, which I think is happening in September, isn't it? Well, who knows? But yes, we're hoping so. I think I think they, I think it will by then. And uh, we're yeah. going to get a lot more shows back in the diary for everybody. I know it's been a nightmare, but um, we're nearly yeah. there. We're nearly there. We can do this. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for that entrance with a box on your head. I don't think I will ever forget that. Uh, you really made me laugh. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Go, we can have some fun with it. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's Marcus Fear, everyone. Oh, we've now come to the end of the show, but a huge thank you to Marcus Veer from Living in the Box being such a great guest on tonight's show. Now we're going to leave you with that last song, Tear the House Down, and I will see you same time, same place next week. Stay safe. I'm Hayley Palmer, and I will see you then. <laughs>